Hey guys, so just so just jumping right into it and picking up from last week's chapter, this 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 one essentially shows a racer's fleet engaging Shuras, and immediately one little bit of contrast I like is that well well we are shown that yes the Interstellar Union Army as a fighting force is far from being inconsequential, as it in it, 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 in terms of terms of power and strength. I also like how it's shown here that the capability of a fleet is really only as effective as its commander. And that's where things get a little interesting when talking about Eraser, because this chapter it wasn't just a means in order to show off his, his basically ether gear or his flashy power or anything but like that, but, but, pretty much through, but pretty much through being shown that, 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 that pretty much power he possesses, it also taps into the idea that, that for as capable a leader as he may be, as Eraser may be, his greatest shortcoming in this is his is this sense of arrogance and self-reliance he has. Like it, it, even before the battle begins, we pretty much saw how how he how he how he had had how he had had pretty much disregarded uh, both Justice and Jaguar's warnings and just and just went on ahead without them. Like without even considering how how how. how Without even considering how how, how much their, their their contribution could, could well, well how their contribution could, could could have actually helped in um in in, in actually in actually preventing in actually preventing a, a lot of lives from being uh, could, could could have actually prevented like or or, or or a lot of lives from being lost or or, or just from or, or pretty much minimizing or pretty much minimizing a, a lot of the casualties anyway, and. In some ways, you could say that, that viewing this from Erasure's perspective exposes the greatest shortcoming of the entire Arashion Space Galactic Interstellar story, which is because of a lack of chain of command, th th there's a real lack of consideration towards the idea of just uh, of, 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 of disregarding in any kind of any kind of path or, or idea that potentially could, could potentially lead to like that, that could potentially lead to both victories and, and the least amount of casualties, or just, or, and and it's not even just that, but just something as simple as having the sense of urgency in, in having the sense of urgency in, in, in terms of which to in, in, in which to prioritize what's actually important over what's personally important. And the thing is, it's it's not like this whole fleet battle against Shura is like the first example of of of, from, of from either of these things either. Like we've pretty much seen we've we've seen it play out before on Foresta when Justice had completely ignored everyone and everything going on around him in favor of hashing out his personal issues with Elsie. It's the a lot of this is really just painting a picture that while the Union Army as an organization is in its own way effective and and capable. The, the ones in command have a have no real sense of responsibility for, for just the power and authority they wield. Like they, the, the, or at least in or again, in least in Erasure's case, he doesn't seem to realize that he can that that, that he does have the ability in, in in order to in order to claim victory while while, 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 while also like also coming up with an, an idea or a strategy in, in, in that that kind of minimizes the casualties again. Something I don't think he's taking full advantage of as a leader. Um, now, we get a very interesting exchange between Shura and one of his generals, who mentions mentioned offhandedly that we mentioned offhandedly that 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 mentioned offhandedly that e, e that e that e that e Juna being Shura's consort before Shura like corrected him as her secretary, then then cut him off before he could say who she was or used to be. And yeah, I hate it when a manga does this because it just leaves us speculating for days on end, days and months on end, which is fun to do, but also frustrating as fuck in other respects. But if I had to take a guess as to who as to who I, I pretty much think as to who I, I personally think Ijuna is, just based off the brief exchange, I'm imagining she's a former royal from one of the many planets Nero conquered, and fell under his rule like, like uh, and fell under his rule like, like Prince during the creation of the Nero Empire. Again, that's my best bet, and the only thing that makes makes that passing consort comment make any sense. But as far as how this is gonna come back into play with play with the story, that's something else entirely. But I do imagine that one point that the Prince Nero had wanted sure to marry her. For political reasons, but he actively refused and rebelled. Which, if 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 it was a thing where where pretty much Nero had 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 foreseen 
had foreseen what like like Pernshura what like like Pernshura's like marriage to her, that that would also mean that his that 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 his clairvoyance or his foresight what or, or or whatever he does with those dice, it kind of proves that if if that didn't happen if if they didn't actually get married according to his predictions, that means he, that that his predictions themselves are in some ways flawed. But how are they flawed is the big question. And, and, and what's going to be different from what he predicts. Um, now, obviously, the other thing to talk about, though, is Eraser's Ether Gear, which, if we can talk, if we can take what was said at face value, essentially means his Ether Gear is fueled by the life force of his dead comrades, or, or just, or it's, it's nothing as cruel as that, and it just takes time for, for it to fully activate. But in either case, it is kind of pretty horrific to think that that in the in order to actually use his ability, he needed to sacrifice his comrades in order to do it. Like it, it was it was all a matter of just just charging up his his they they were really only there in order to act as as decoy in order to charge up his ether gear. Um, I mean I mean the display of power is definitely worth the sacrifice, mind you, but it's also one of those times where you wonder if the sacrifice was worth the display of power as well. I mean. Yes, obviously, it, 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 it got, got rid of the Kraken Cruiser, but again, going back to my previous point, there's a real lack of even baseline empathy and 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 and, and, and baseline empathy with the Eurasian States Interstellar. That makes me fear that even more, even them makes me fear them even more than I do the people who are considered the villains of this series. But I think what's even scarier is just how calm that is just how how much calm that. that, that is, how, is just just how calm Shura still is, then and and pretty much knowing what we know about him, that Kraken cruiser was probably just his warning shot. Meaning Eraser, I think at this point has fallen into into a trap. Um, with that said, I haven't talked about the cover pages that often, but in this case, I feel I do because I because because even though it was presented in a very cartoonishly comedic way. I do appreciate how Mashima had, had, had pretty much used that extra space in order to provide a, a, a what was basically a, a pretty much strategy map of where everyone currently is. And I wouldn't mind if the anime had animated that section as well when it got to that point, because on top of it being a cool little side thing that helps to keep track of everyone, it's just a nice bit of levity as well. And yeah, the Eden Zero crew and Goodwin are headed full steam towards to intercept the all link but again with the setup of, of from sure have, have like like, like, like first facing off against a racer and at this point believing that that a racer has fallen into a trap of some kind why do i get the feeling we're looking at a situation where shiki's good nature is going to get the best of him and in the attempt to intercept the all link he'll choose to save a racer instead i mean all the pieces are just seem to perfectly align for for, for that to happen but yeah, I, I don't know. We'll 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 have we'll have to wait and see there as to as to what happens there specifically, I guess. Um, but yeah, um, also but uh, uh, also I, I I suppose I suppose one I suppose the, I suppose the whole I I, I suppose I, 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 I suppose one, one thing I, I didn't really I I I I, I kind of had to correct myself. I th I thought Goodwin had like. A whole army with him but i suppose i suppose not it's, it's really just him his crew and and just the eden and eden zero and eden zero i think like I, i'm not i'm not gonna say his army isn't isn't like is small or anything but it, it just the fact that there's the two ships just shows that yeah it isn't as it, it, it isn't as large as we thought but yeah it's still large enough i think in order to in order to help out uh, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Analyst Crunch Roll. Dead Night of Enemy, signing off. Later, guys.